Here are today's top stories. The military ensures no special treatment for Senator Antonio Tellanes once he is arrested and detained at the AFP Custodial Center. President Duterte promises a graft-free environment to potential Israeli investors. Economic managers approve measures to ensure sufficient food supply and ease inflation. And the Philippine Sports Commission plans to meet with involved agencies to improve the national grassroots sports program. Good day. I'm William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. The Department of National Defense assures there will be no special treatment for Senator Antonio Trillanes once he is arrested and detained at the AFP Custodial Center in Camp Aguinaldo, Quezon City. Defense spokesperson Arsenio Andolong assured that Trillanes will be detained in indecent facilities befitting an officer and a gentleman. Andolong also clarified that the AFP is not being politicized. These claims surfaced after the AFP was ordered to arrest Trillanes following the voiding of his amnesty. Andolong explains the AFP is an apolitical organization and they also follow a chain of command. He adds that there is no motive for the military to purposefully put Trillanes in jail for the sake of politics. Meanwhile, Trillanes may be arrested even without a warrant by the military police since he has been reverted to active military status following the voiding of his amnesty. An earthquake with a preliminary magnitude of 6.7 and a number of aftershocks rocked Japan's Hokkaido prefecture. Japan Meteorological Agency, JMA, said the major temblor was centered in the Hokkaido prefecture at 3.08 a.m. local time Thursday. The earthquake logged upper six in some areas of Hokkaido prefecture on the Japanese seismic intensity scale, which peaks at seven according to the JMA. Meanwhile, the Philippine Embassy in Japan said no Filipino has been reported injured from the powerful earthquake. Ambassador to Japan Jose C. Laurel said so far there are no Filipinos reported among the missing or injured. Laurel said the embassy is ready to provide assistance to affected Filipinos in the area and is working closely with Honorary Consul Ken Tobe and leaders of the Samahang Pilipino sa Hokkaido to monitor their situation. There are around 1,800 Filipinos residing on the island, the Department of Foreign Affairs said. Meanwhile, Malacanang has sent prayers to victims of the Hokkaido quake. Palace spokesperson Harry Roque assured that the DFA is monitoring the situation and staying in touch with the leaders of the Filipino community in Hokkaido to check the condition of Filipinos there to ensure their safety. President Rodrigo Duterte has extended its invitation to businesses in Israel to invest in the Philippines. He assures investors that doing business in the country will be corruption-free. Benj Bondok has the story. President Rodrigo Duterte has promised a corruption-free business environment as he enticed Israeli businessmen to invest in the Philippines. Duterte witnessed the signing of at least 21 agreements between Filipino and Israeli businessmen in Jerusalem. He assured them that rules will be followed and that he will not tolerate extortion activities. So my guarantee really is my word. And if you go there, if you want a comfortable, uh, maybe, beginning, just tell me. I will husband it here, your project, whatever it is. There will be no corruption. There will be no harassment, no nothing. It's an ordinary day-to-day -day government uh, business that you have to find. And if you can do that, uh, and if you go there, tell me. We would be happy, uh, somebody like you, gentlemen and ladies, doing business in my city, contributing to nation building of the Republic of the Philippines. Duterte's resolve to fight corruption has resulted in the dismissal of government officials, including his own appointees. The president also took the opportunity to invite Israeli investors to invest in his hometown Davao City. Meanwhile, Duterte also defended his relentless fight against illegal drugs and criminality, insisting that it is really of national interest to protect the youth. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Bench Bondo. 
Malacanang says the economic team of President Rodrigo Duterte has been monitoring inflation with vigilance. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque made this assurance as inflation hit a nine-year high at 6.4% in August. Roque says the government is taking action to assist the poor while keeping the macro economy stable. He adds they are also taking steps to address challenges faced by Filipino families, particularly rising prices. Budget Secretary Benjamin Diokno earlier said a big chunk of the August inflation was due to the rise in food prices. Diokno said the social mitigating measures such as the Unconditional Cash Transfer Program and Pantawid Pamilyang Filipino Program should be delivered much faster. The Presidential Communications Operations Office enjoins foreign diplomats to look beyond the popular perception of the Duterte administration's drug war. PCOO Assistant Secretary Ramon Kualaping III made this call during a diplomatic briefing on human rights-related issues held at the Department of Foreign Affairs or DFA. Kualaping says enforcement of anti-illegal drug laws only compromise 10% of the government's campaign. He stresses that it is not the government's policy to sanction killings. Kualaping notes that 90% of the government's mandate focuses on rehabilitation, justice, and advocacy. He says the government is also undertaking measures to reintegrate former drug dependents into society through the Rehabilitation Campaign. In closing, he asked diplomats to support the Rehabilitation Program, describing it as an investment for the future. Still to come, economic managers approve measures to ensure sufficient food supply and ease inflation. The Department of Energy donates 50 e-trikes for use as public transportation on Boracay Island. These and more when the PNA Newsroom continues. Komunikasyon, koneksyon, kalaman, kasiyahan, balitaan, impormasyon, at maging baliktanaw. Ano man ang definition mo sa social media, hindi maitatanggi na dahil sa iba't ibang social networking sites ay dumadami ang nakakaya nating gawin. Batay sa pag-aaral ng United Kingdom-based consultancy na We Are Social, sa so 105.7 million katao sa Pilipinas, Nasa 63% nito ang nahumaling sa paggamit ng internet, 67 million ang may account sa Facebook, habang 10 million naman ang nasa Instagram. Siyam na oras sa 20 na minuto kada araw ang ginugugol ng bawat Pilipino sa internet. Ngayong 2018, nananatili ang Pilipinas na namunguna sa paggamit at pagiging aktibo sa social media. Ang main function ng social media is to engage with the people. To get them involved. Naging malaking impluensya ang social media sa desisyon ng mga Pilipino na iboto ang noon ay Davao City Mayor na si Rodrigo Roa Duterte bilang Pangulo ng ating bansa. Humigit kumulang labing-anim na milyong Pilipino ang bumoto kay Pangulong Duterte kung saan malaki ang naging papel ng social media. Ang Presidential Communications Operations Office ay ang tanggapan ng gobyerno na nagahatid ng mga balita kung ano ang mga nagaganap na pagbabago sa ating bansa. Layunin rin itong mas ipaunawa sa bawat Pilipino ang mga polisiya at programa ng gobyerno upang makuha ang suporta ng mga ito ng sagayon. Tulong-tulong nating makamit ang mga adikain, lalong-lalo na ang pag-unlad at pagbabago. Yung mga content natin are products of various or the various agencies under PCOO. So ito po yung uh, PTV, uh, Radio Pilipinas, Philippine Information Agency, Philippine News Agency, at RTBM. So si PCO proper then also creates content for the Facebook page. So yung mga content na to, uh, they showcase lahat ng mga accomplishments ng executive branch, ng government, and of course, uh, because of our transparency, 
dito natin pinapakita lahat ng mga activities ni President Duterte live. Taong 2016, nagsimula ang Facebook page ng Presidential Communications na dati ay Presidential Communications Development and Strategic Planning Office. Sa paglipas ng panahon, unti-unting dumami ang taga-subaybay nito hanggang sa taong kasalukuyan sa buwan ng Hulyo. Meron ang mahigit kumulang sa 1,430,746 na followers na ito. Patunay lamang na may mga progreso nangyayari sa paghahatid ng PCOO na mga balita sa publiko sa tulong ng social media. We chose social media as our um, main platform for communication because first and foremost, Um, it is the most convenient and fastest way to disseminate information. At hindi lang po dissemination, pero usapan natin, engagement rin po. Because only in social media versus all the other uh, various communication channels, nagkakaroon ng two-way communication. The government's economic development cluster has approved several measures to ensure adequate food supply in the country. The cluster is pushing for reforms and other measures in the agriculture sector to bring down food prices. This as inflation rose to 6.4% in August 2018. The cluster recommended the release of some 4.6 million sacks of rice available in warehouses of the National Food Authority nationwide. The economic managers also urged the Senate to immediately pass the rice tarification bill. Other measures include facilitating the distribution of imports in wet markets, monitoring of rice from ports to NFA warehouses and retail outlets, and reduction of the gap between farm gate and retail prices of chicken. Also, importation of sugar will be opened by the Sugar Regulatory Admi Administration to direct users at moderate cost to consumers. The Philippines and Israel have signed $83 million worth of investment deals which is seen to prove the vast opportunities for foreign investors in the Philippines. More on this from Miguel Hill. Some $83 million worth of business deals signed between the Philippines and Israel during President Rodrigo Duterte's three-day visit prove the vast investment opportunities available to foreigners in the Philippines. Duterte capped his Israel visit Wednesday with 14 memorandums of agreement and understanding between the two countries and eight letters of intent from Israeli firms looking to invest in the Philippines. Trade Secretary Ramon Lopez says the Philippines is committed to pursue several growth opportunities by strengthening partnerships with emerging economic partners like Israel. The administration through the Department of Trade and Industry has been pushing to diversify its market by establishing stronger ties with non-traditional trade partners like countries from the Middle East. Lopez said the Philippines is also looking at the technologies developed by Israeli companies for the agriculture sector, particularly for farming, drip irrigation, and milk production, among others, as well as artificial intelligence technologies electronics, and water management, including desalination and recycling. Lopez likewise noted that the Philippines can learn from Israel's vibrant startup ecosystem as the country aims to grow this sector. For the PNA Newsroom, I am Miguel Hill. The Department of Energy donated 50 electric tricycles to be used once Boracay opens this October 26. The e-trikes are expected to arrive in Boracay within this week. Richard Osmeña, LTFRB Regional Director, says the e-trikes were donated by the DOE as it pushes for an efficient and environment-friendly mode of transportation. Osmeña said the new units are just an initial donation from the DOE to augment the more or less 50 existing e-trikes on the island. Osmeña reiterated that only e-trikes will be allowed to ply on Boracay Island when it reopens. He added they are also expecting that DOE will deploy some electric passenger jeepneys on the island within the month. Meanwhile, local officials of Malay, Aklan are set to discuss the phasing out of old tricycle units on the island. These tricycles will be brought to the mainland of Malay town, particularly in Katiklan, which could be used by some tricycle drivers. The National Food Authority in Western Pangasinan has assured the public that there is no hoarding of rice in the province. 
NFA Western Pangasinan Assistant Manager Chona Maramba explained that businessmen in the province could not afford to hoard rice while its demand and price are at its peak. She also noted that rice traders in the province currently have low rice stocks. Maramba said there are over 1.4 million bags of rice available in the province. Commercial rice in Pangasinan sells at 43 to 48 pesos per kilo. Meanwhile, the Department of Trade and Industry, or DTI, says prices of commodities in Antique are within the suggested retail price issued as of September 1st. Glenn Fernando, who led the on-the-spot monitoring of the DTI Antique, reiterates that they are closely monitoring the prices of canned sardines, coffee, corned beef, and others. Antique has implemented an automatic price ceiling as the province is still under a state of calamity due to heavy monsoon rains. Up next, the Philippine Navy is set to determine the liability of officers in the grounding of the BRP Gregorio del Pilar. The Philippine Sports Commission plans to meet with involved agencies to improve the national grassroots sports program. The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders. Isa sa malaking pagbabago sa PCOO ay ang lawak ng balita na inihahatid nito sa taumbayan. Kung dati ay nakatuon lamang ang pansin ng Departamento sa Ehekutibong Sangay ng Gobyerno, ngayon maging mga balita sa leislatura at hudikatura ay abot na ng mamamayang Pilipino. Dahil ito sa iba't ibang ahensya ng PCOO na nagahatid ng balita maging sa social media, ang Radio Television Malacanang, Philippine News Agency, People's Television Network at Radio Pilipinas Online Streaming. Basically, the Philippine News Agency is a the official uh, online news service of the government. They had their glory days, but later on, mo na pa bayaan po dahil ito stuck on what they're just doing. Pero dahil kailangan, you know, with the trends in media, we have to keep up. So I saw the need to, you know, improve uh, physical structure and um, yung training, upgrading ng skills ng mga tao and of course, upgrade the equipment. We post uh, videos or uh, video reports. Maraming engagements. Uh, yung tao kasi are more visual. Eh. The, yung attention span nila of reading a very lengthy article, hindi na ganon. I mean, I mean, even before siguro ganon. They appreciate it more kung uh, videos yung reports. Visual, they're more visual. Uh, nakita po natin talaga na medyo napabayaan po yung Philippine Broadcasting Service in terms of equipment, uh, the morale was not so high. So nung pumasok po tayo, what we first did was to analyze and assess ano yung pwede nating gawin pa na alam natin na sa kakayahan po natin, na sa mandato po natin, na palakihin pa ang, ang PBS. And Lo and behold, in less than two years, uh, major, like really major improvements nakikita po natin ngayon. Number one, sa gamit, sa booth, sa central station, sa station natin. Uh, we also reinvented uh, other other approaches in re-imaging or repackaging yung ating mga stasyon because we want to make sure that we capture almost every uh, demographic sa ating target. Nung bago pa lang kami dito, I think ang, ang bilang ng, ng mga tao na sumusunod sa PTV sa social media was only 30,000. But uh, again, na, na, napalaki to, um, to 1.7 million. I think also kaya rin nagka, nagkaroon ng ganun is because talaga nagpursige kami na ang, ang mga postings doon ay updated kung ano yung bago hanggat maaari post agad. Um, of course, yung, uh, yung mga kababayan natin, pinanonood na, na OFWs, pinanonood ang PTV through, through social media. Napansin natin yung mga, mga dapat baguhin dito sa RTVM nung dumating tayo. Two years ago, i-upgrade yung internet bandwidth. So, nag-upgrade tayo from around 10 Mbps to 100 Mbps para ma-serve natin yung mga mga 
media entities na ma-download yung mga content na ina-upload natin every day, every time na mayroong activity sa presidente. Lahat ng mga videos na upload ng RTVM sa ngayon, la- halos lahat ng videos pagdating sa presidente, laging 1 million ang reach at ang taas na engagement kumpara dun sa previous admin. Sa tulong ng mga ahensyang ito at ng social media, mas lumawak ngayon ang nararating ng Presidential Communications Operations Office dahil mas maraming tao na ang abot nito sa anmang panig ng mundo. Kasabay ng mga pagbabagong ginagawa para sa mas ikabubuti ng serbisyo ng ahensya, hindi maiiwasan ang mga kritisismo. Kritisismong dulot ng hindi pagsuporta sa mga programa ng gobyerno o dahil sa maling paniniwala ng ilang mamamayan. Mga kritisismo dahil sa pagkakaiba ng mga opinyon at paniniwala. Minsan nakakalikta ang pahalagahan ng mensahe na naisiparating dahil sa ilang teknikalidad kung saan agad itong binabala laban sa ahensya. Hinarap ng PCOO ang bawat pagsubok at tinumbasan ng mga solusyon. Isa sa mga naging pinakamatunog na usapin ang fake news. Bagay na sinolusyonan ng PCOO sa pamamagitan ng Provincial Communications Officers Network at sa kampanya nito na tinawag na Hashtag Dismiss This. Layunin ng programang ito ang maipalaganap ang tamang paraan ng pagbahagi ng impormasyon sa social media upang hindi mabiktima ng fake news. Isa-isang binisita ng PCOO ang bawat bayan at ibinabahagi sa kanila ang tunay na plano ng gobyerno at kumukuha ng tulong at suporta mula sa mamamayan upang mas lumawak pa ang sandata natin laban sa fake news at disinformation. Samantalang ang karapatan ng taumbayan na malaman kung wasto bang nagagamit ang budget ng bawat ahensya ng Pilipinas sa mga proyekto kung saan nakalaan, ito ay ang handog naman ng Freedom of Information. Sumailalim din sa workshops, seminars sa training ang mga empleyado ng PCOO upang mas mahasa pa ang kanila mga kakayahan sa larangan ng communication. Uh, masasabi ko na malaki ang pagbabago ng trabaho ng PCOO ngayon Uh, kumpara doon sa mga nagdaang uh, administrasyon, mas aktibo ang PCOO sa pagpapalaganap ng mga impormasyon ng gobyerno, lalo-lalo na sa mga liblib na lugar. It, it's, it's been able to manage you know, the resources that it does have to, to reach out as many, to as many uh, Filipinos as possible. Bawat detalye, bawat bantas, bawat letra, bawat impormasyon na dapat malaman ng bawat Pilipino ay titiyake ng PCOO na makakaabot sa lahat. Ang social media na madalas nagbibigay aliw, gawin nating tulay upang maibahagi sa kapwa ang mga balitang hatid ng gobyerno upang lumawak ang suporta at sabay-sabay nating matanaw ang tunay na pagunlad at pagbabago. So as much as possible, we try to make Uh, everything very transparent to the public. Hindi hindi naman naglalabas ng propaganda. Ang nilalabas lang kung ano yung totoong nangyayari sa administrasyon. Yes, we are on the right path and we will continue doing this because we want to make sure that we will reach more and more of our kababayans. The Philippine Navy is set to investigate the grounding of the BRP Gregorio del Pilar in the Hasa Hasa Shoal. The investigation will also determine whether the commanding officer of the BRP Gregorio del Pilar would be held liable for the incident. The Navy says it has spent 30 million pesos to retrieve the flagship. The cost included the rented of tugboats that will tow the ship to Subic, where it is expected to arrive on Friday for dry dock maintenance. The Philippine Sports Commission, or PSC, is set to hold a dialogue with various government agencies to strengthen the country's grassroots sports program. 
PSE Chairman Butch Ramirez says the so-called serious strategic planning scheduled for the first week of October will involve the Departments of Education, Interior, Health, and the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Ramirez said they intend to boost their support for outstanding athletes of Batang Pinoy and Palarong Pambansa, from which the country can field its future national athletes. Ramirez clarified that while the PSC will focus its attention on the grassroots program, the, the support for elite athletes remain with funds coming from the Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corporation or PAGCOR. The PSC has a 600 million peso budget for 2018 to spend on grassroots athletes. Ramirez, however, expects partnerships in the private sector to do their part in supporting the grassroots as well. The ASEAN Center for Biodiversity and the European Union is tapping the youth in protecting Southeast Asia's natural resources. It also hopes to draw in more public support in moves to preserve the environment. Marikor Zapata has a story. A new international program aims to promote more youth involvement in the conservation of Southeast Asia's rich but threatened biodiversity. Launched in Metro Manila on Tuesday, the European Union-funded ASEAN Youth Biodiversity Program, or AYBP, will provide capacity building, mentorship, and resources for empowering the region's 15 to 35-year-olds in contributing to biodiversity conservation in Southeast Asia. Vongtep Artha Kaivalvati, ASEAN Deputy Secretary General for Social Cultural Community, says more youth action is needed to save Southeast Asia's bountiful natural assets, such as the Coral Triangle, the Earth Center of Marine Biodiversity. The ASEAN official said Southeast Asia's biodiversity is increasingly under threat from climate change, habitat destruction, rapid urbanization, population explosion, and other factors. The AYBP's two signature activities are the Youth Biodiversity Leaders Training and Youth Internships in ASEAN Heritage Parks. The AYBP is part of the second leg of the ASEAN Biodiversity Heroes Regional Forum. Biodiversity Heroes featured at the forum were Cambodia's Sophia Chin, Indonesia's Alex Y. Simon, and the Philippines' Angel Alcala. They were among the 10 conservation advocates who received the ASEAN Biodiversity Heroes Award last year. The forum also aims to inspire public action for saving and protecting biodiversity. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Maricor Zapata. Let's now check out the weather forecast for Metro Manila and the rest of the country. And here's another look at today's top stories. The military ensures no special treatment for Senator Antonio Trillanes once he is arrested and detained at the AFP Custodial Center. President Duterte promises a graft-free environment to potential Israeli investors. Economic managers approve measures to ensure sufficient food supply and ease inflation. And the Philippine Sports Commission plans to meet with involved agencies to improve the national grassroots sports program. Thank you for watching another edition of the PNA Newsroom. To check out these and other stories, visit the PNA website or follow the Philippine News Agency on Facebook and Twitter. For more stories about the government and how it serves the Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. And that's your daily dose of the latest news and information that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, I'm William Theo. Good day.